Hey everybody, so a relatively short video today. I'm still recovering from a recent snowboard injury, so I haven't been able to do that much on bike content. It's nothing serious, I'm healing up fine, and we'll get back to the riding videos pretty shortly. But for this week's video, we're gonna get a little bit nerdy and dive back into the topic of torque wrenches on bikes. Now, it's not too often that you need one of these, but in one very specific instance, you kinda do. So this little attachment is called a crow's foot, and it's meant to attach to a torque wrench, so you can apply the proper amount of torque to a nut that would otherwise require just a box wrench to tighten. Now, on a bike, there's really only one place that you really need this tool and it's when you're setting up a new brake hose on a hydraulic brake line like this and you've got to tighten up the nut at the brifter and at the caliper. Now the thing about using a click type torque wrench like this is once you've got the uh, attachment on like whatever you happen to be using to tighten your bolt as long as you're holding the handle in the right place which again on a click type torque wrench is right in the middle of the handle you'll get a proper torque measurement out of the tool. But the thing is, if you're gonna be using a crow's foot like this, depending on what angle you have the crow's foot set to, in theory, it can alter the torque measurement that you're gonna get from the tool. So if you've ever seen somebody use a torque wrench with a crow's foot on it in like a how-to video or anything like that, there's gonna be no shortage of people down in the comments saying you have to mount the crow's foot like this at a 90 degree angle. And the reason for that is on a click type torque wrench like this, it's the distance between this pivot and the center of rotation of the tool head that actually plays a big role in producing the proper amount of torque. So by turning the crow's foot 90 degrees like this, you can be sure that the distance from this pivot point here to the nut that you're trying to tighten is the same distance as the pivot point to the center of the ratchet here. So the argument is that if you actually turn the crow's foot and try and use it in this configuration, you're actually gonna be applying an incorrect amount of torque because you've now changed the distance between this pivot and where the center of the nut is. Now in an effort to try and end the ongoing debates, we're just gonna test it today on this machine that I've got back here. And my hypothesis is that it actually isn't gonna make as big a difference as some make it out to be. Okay, so what I've got set up here is the digital torque meter. What this is is a calibration tool meant to calibrate torque wrenches and just to measure torque in general. Now this particular tester will read from zero to 10 Newton meters, which is kind of perfect for the average sort of bike shop torque wrench that we'll be using. And because we're doing some bike science here, you know what that means. Time to don the science hat. Okay, so the test is gonna be very simple. I'm just gonna zero out the torque meter here. I've got this kind of crazy contraption that was required so that I can get an eight millimeter hex head at the end of it. And that's going to mate up to the crow's foot that I typically use to tighten the hose nuts when setting up hydraulic disc brakes. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and set the torque wrench. This is a Park Tool TW5.2. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to five Newton meters, like so. I'm gonna put it to 90 degrees, which is where you're supposed to have it when you're using a crow's foot like this. Some people in the comments will even go further and say, technically it's not 90 degrees. It's actually whatever angle is required to keep the distance from this pivot to the center of the ratchet the same as this pivot to the center of the nut that you're trying to tighten. So, so I would say probably technically we need to go maybe one click down to keep that distance exactly the same. And then what we're gonna do, place the torque wrench on the end of it. I'm gonna support the tool here. I'm just going to hold the torque wrench from the middle. Okay, so that first measurement there was 4.76 Newton meters, so slightly under. I'm gonna zero that out and just do another couple of tests just to make sure we've got some repeatability going on here. Okay, again, 4.76 exactly. Let's do another one. 4.68, so it's reading slightly under. That's okay, we're just looking for a baseline here. I realize some of you are probably typing already, like, you know, what is this torque meter? How do we know this sensor is actually accurate? I'm not sure if it's accurate. I think more importantly, what we're looking for is a delta between this configuration here and this configuration here. We're just looking for a change, mostly. Uh, I didn't change the torque settings on the torque wrench. We're still at five Newton meters, but I did reorient the crow's foot into the quote-unquote wrong configuration. Remember now, I have definitely increased the distance from this pivot point to the center of the uh, nut that I would be tightening. So zero out the torque meter, hold the torque wrench in the same spot again. And now I'm at 5.42 Newton meters. So definitely more torque was applied in this configuration. Let's run this a couple of more times. Let's do it again, 5.38. Let's do a couple more times just for the sake of getting a trend. 
5.33, so a little bit of variability there. Why don't we just take a rough average, we'll call it 5.4. We saw a 5.3, we saw a 5.4 something, and then slightly above that at 5.5. Let's call it an average of 5.4. Okay, so we got roughly three measurements in each configuration, using the crow foot at 90 degrees, which is technically the more correct way, and then using it kind of straight outward, which is supposedly the incorrect way. Now what we found when we were using the crow foot at 90 degrees, we were getting on average 4.7 Newton meters applied. Now again, I realize that's slightly low. It's possible that this torque wrench is slightly out of calibration. Again, the important thing that we're looking for is the delta when we we're using in the incorrect configuration. So 4.7 is our baseline using the quote unquote correct configuration. And then when we straighten the crow foot out so that it was in line, and again, we lengthen that distance from the pivot point, we were reading on average 5.4 Newton meters. Now doing a quick computation here, 5.4 minus 4.7 gives us 0 0.7. 0 0.7 divided by 4.7 is actually a 14.89, or let's just call it a 15% differential, which means that there's a 15% increase in torque that you're actually applying to the bolt if you use the crow's foot in the straight outward configuration as opposed to the 90 degree configuration. Now to put that in context, this GRX uh, lever here, it has a Rated torque spec here of five to six Newton meters, which means you can apply anywhere between five and six Newton meters and still be in spec. Now, a one Newton meter jump from five to six Newton meters represents a 20% jump from five Newton meters up to six Newton meters. So in this particular case, again, this really only applies to this exact torque wrench and this exact crow's foot, but to give us some actual numerical values, variability between using this in the correct versus the incorrect configuration, again, only accounts for a 15% difference in applied torque, which is actually still within the five to six Newton meter range because that represents a 20% margin for error. So I kind of hate to break it to all the tool nerds out there who are gonna criticize people for using a torque wrench and crow foot in this quote unquote incorrect configuration because in this particular case, either way works. Yeah, I know this one's gonna be controversial for sure. Now, whether or not you're gonna use this information to change your habits, well, that's on you. But for me, I actually do find it really frustrating to try and maintain that 90 degree uh, orientation when tightening that nut on the uh, brifter here, because in that configuration, you really have a small window where you can actually tighten the nut. And I think it would actually save some time to not have to worry about what position that crow's foot is pointing all the time. So if it's me, I'm probably gonna be that slight bit less careful now in the exact orientation of the crow's foot, knowing that the difference between correct and incorrect is barely 15%. Now, whether or not you agree with this science here, there is one thing that we should all be agreeing on, and that's that for length dependent, click type torque wrenches like most of those we use in the bike shop, it actually does matter where you hold the handle. Now this is a soapbox that I'm gonna continue to stand on, but I'll link a video down in the description where I've actually shown using the same strategy here that where you grip the handle of the torque wrench can actually vastly alter the amount of torque that you're gonna apply. Now that idea I know is super counterintuitive. If you don't believe me though, just check out that video. It does a pretty good job explaining it in my opinion. All right, well that's gonna do it for this one. If you have any questions, just let us know down in the comments. We'll try and do our best to get back to as many as we can. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.